What is going on guys? Uh, today in this video we're going to do a short one, a simple one, but one that if I'd found a couple of months ago would have been very, very useful for me. In this video I'm going to show you guys how to remove dried Sikaflex or 5200, basically any of those big, thick, uh, like uh, silicon style sealants that people use on their boats and on all the different projects. Um, when it dries, it's hard to remove. So. I've worked out a hack, I think it's pretty damn useful and I'm, I'm gonna show you it. Um, so let's get into it. And before we do, I just worked out that 96% of people who watch my videos aren't subscribed. So if you're not subscribed and this is valuable at all, I would really appreciate a subscribe and a, don't forget to leave a comment um, down below, always appreciated. Let's get into it. Um, I wanted to quickly talk about where, what people use this stuff for. So. If you're doing something like drilling a hole in a boat, um, particularly fiberglass wood, that kind of stuff, usually um, the outside of the boat, right, the exterior, is treated with something to protect it from water. So that's, it might be varnish, it might be paint, it might be fiberglass, it's treated with something. The second you drill through that, you're exposing whatever that inside core material is to water. If it's wood, it's going to be rot. So obviously if you're drilling a hole in a transom of a boat to install a a sounder or lights or a bung and reseal that. What you need to do is treat it with something. Now the best way to treat it is actually, you know, re-fiberglass it if it's wood, but often that's hard, time consuming, often people don't have the skills for that. So the next best thing is something like this. So this is Sikaflex, it literally is a silicon, a silicon style sealant. Um, always get the marine stuff, but basically it squeezes out like toothpaste, which is awesome. It's pretty handy to use, you can chuck gloves on or even just use your fingers and, and clean up the edges before it dries. People do it that way all the time and it's really, really useful. The challenge is when it dries, it dries really, really hard. So I've seen uh, this sort of stuff, uh, you know, you might glue a piece of a piece of wood to the, the back of the boat, maybe it's like a transom plate, and it, it could take you hours of prying to get it off, right? It's really, really strong. So. Um, once it's on, it typically stays on, and removing it is difficult. I had a situation where I was actually testing, uh, gluing a transducer for the depth sounder, a really long, um, the 3-in-1 Lorenz active imaging transducer, to the underside hull of the boat. Um, it's commonly done, people do it all the time. Uh, the problem was, because of just the size of the boat, the weight of the boat, obviously it's not a huge boat, um, it, did, it got a bit of a lean when that thing caught water, and, um, and I didn't want that, so I had to remove it. Removing it was a freaking nightmare. I eventually ripped off the transducer, but left all the Sikaflex underneath. And I spent literally hours trying to remove it without actually damaging the, the paint or even the glass underneath that. So I tried a bunch of things. Common, most common tool people recommend online is basically cutting it off. So people will typically use something like this, which is just like literally a blade. Um, and they'll literally go through and, da -da 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 and try and cut it off and then eventually sand it. I don't really want to sand it because I've got paint under that and paint under that then requires repainting, re basically resealing it, refixing it, everything. I found another tool. It works really, really well. And to, to test and prove that, what I did was four months ago, and this is uh, no word of a lie, four months ago, I made this piece of hardwood. I just knew I would make a video like this in the future. Just same stuff. So this is literally um, marine grade, uh, what's that? 291 marine grade Sikaflex. Obviously this is the white stuff, black stuff is the same. Um, uh, I'm pretty sure 5200 is a similar process. I actually have never used it, but a lot of people use it in marine applications. What I did was like quite a thick line there and then a, a, just a, a smear, but keeping it quite thick, and then a really, really thin smear. Now the reason I a thin smear is you can imagine getting that off is actually quite hard to get it off to a clean surface. But I wanna show you the hack, let's get into it. All right guys, so to do this, we do need to buy a tool, right? And I think it's a tool that most people would probably get a lot of value from if they had it. Some of you will already have it. If you watch my last boat restoration, you've seen it before. It's this guy right here. It's a just standard multi-tool. Now, this is the cheapest one I could find at my local Bunnings. Um, I used it with a blade that looks like this, a cutting disc um, with like literally teeth all the way around it. The reason why I use this was to cut through the inside fiberglass shell so I could cut out the transom of the boat. Um, but then I use this on every single part of the boat and it was actually so useful. I use this to this day to cut a lot of different things if I need that like real precision, right? So if I've got to cut a small piece of wood with a really clean line, I find this to be the most accurate way of doing it, which sounds counterintuitive, 
but it works super, super well, right? So that's that tool. Um, when you buy one of these, it comes with a bunch of different tools. Um, it, like often it comes with different cutting discs. It comes with, this one's like a grinding, like like a almost like a really rough style grinding disc. Um, it comes with a, a, like different shapes of discs. And um, one that I thought was pr actually pretty cool was an, even, even like a, a really fine sanding plate. So you can buy sandpaper sheets for it. And then if you've got to get into tight corners, into, into like, you know, difficult angles, this is quite useful. But the attachment I want to show you guys today is this guy right here. This is, it's basically a blade, but it's, it's not very sharp. Like, I'm literally shoving my hand on that and it's not cutting, it's not doing anything. Um, but because of the way this moves from side to side rapidly, what it ultimately means is that you're not ever in a situation where you're just shoving a flat blade or a static blade into it, trying to cut through it, because that just becomes really, really difficult and likelihood of actually cutting into the wooden surface is quite high. With this on this little like pivot point moving backwards and forwards, it makes it really, really easy to just basically cut through it like butter. So let's get into it. I'm gonna attach it all now, and then, uh, and then we'll get on to testing it. And it is literally that simple. So now that blade is attached, if I turn that on, the camera probably won't pick that up, but it literally sits there and pivots backwards and forwards like that. It's almost like a vibration movement. Um, and the other cool thing, it's also got a speed, a uh, little speed sensor in the back here, so I can go like this. What I almost guarantee is I will not need to adjust the speed from one. It moves so quickly. And this stuff, once it's moving, you can actually get through this stuff quite quickly. So let's get into it. We'll start from the thick stuff, the thin stuff, and see how we go. So that went through, obviously, so quickly. That was in real time. I literally didn't do anything to, to uh, make that look deceptive in any way. It literally was that simple. Now, on the back of it, the piece I just cut off, you can see it's sort of like butted up a little bit there. What's happened is because it's moving so fast, it actually gets hot and almost like melts it if it stays in there for too long. So I'll often find that it can leave a bit of a rough surface uh, in some respects, but if I show you this, the smear left here is so thin, I can literally like rub my finger flat over that and like you don't feel it, right? So if I had my eyes closed and did that, I would not know there was something on that surface. There is something there, it is still there. Um, what you can do is you can actually hit it again with the multi-tool and try and get it off. I think you, I personally think you do risk uh, like cutting into the surface of the wood with that. So. It, depending on what was going to happen next here, if this was white Sikaflex on a white boat and that was left, and obviously it wouldn't be as obvious because it wouldn't be a dark surface behind it, I would probably leave it in all honesty. I don't think I don't think anyone else is going to notice it and I would leave it looking like that. If it was, you know, there was nothing underneath it, uh, it, it was just, just literally a white gel coat, goat or white paint, I, don't, I think that would be fine. If you're really pedantic, you could get rid of that. Um, you could use some wet and dry sandpaper and literally just go only on the Sikaflex really, really carefully. That would be one way of doing it. But like I say, I almost wouldn't bother. Let's keep going and we'll see how these are, these different pieces go. So same thing again, I'm obviously not digging into the wood. If I did, I probably could actually scratch the wood, but because it's a blunt surface, I actually, I don't know, I feel like that's quite unlikely. Um, it's, it's sharp and it moves, but as long as you don't dig it into the wood and you run parallel like this, it will typically just bring it straight off. That's another one. So that's that one there. 
you can see there are you know pieces there that have sort of come off almost like an eraser on paper you can imagine bits of it coming up um but that there is as smooth as that that is literally like it's just it's just it just feels like a smooth surface which is kind of amazing given how easy that is. If I was having to remove this without this tool, if I was using a blade, that could take you half an hour and you're probably gonna have divots into the wood where you've cut in. It's just, this is one of those times where I think right tool for the job makes such a big difference, especially if you've got a lot of this on the surface. Let's do the last one. <laughs> Because this one was so thin, I wanted to play it conservatively. Um, that is like, like very, very thin there. There's not much to that. I think you'd really struggle to get that up any other way. Um, it does stretch and will break, so it's not like you could get the corner and peel it off. Once it's on, it's on, right? That would just keep, keep breaking off. But that's come off pretty smoothly. Um, you could do two or three more runs over that, but like I say, if your boat is white, like most boats are, and this is left on the surface, I don't think you're gonna notice that because it's white on white. And, um, and it's so smooth, it's not going to disrupt water flow or, or, or have any impact on, um, on the way the water flows across the surface of the boat. So in that case, I would probably leave that. If you want to get rid of it, you could try a bunch of different solvents and, um, and try and, you know, like melt it down. I'm not a big fan of using like heavy chemicals on, um, on my boat paint just because I know that from time to time they can disrupt it. But, but that's a way to get rid of it if you need to. Um, but that is, they are smooth as um if, if i reckon if i rubbed that enough i could probably even because it's quite warm obviously from that i could probably get actually actually that is actually coming off just with my finger now because it's warmed up it's almost like a bit of friction is actually removing it so there you go guys it might not be a perfect solution i know that when uh, that sicker on the back of the on the website when you look up how to remove it do actually say once it's dry and i like i literally left these to dry for four months obviously it probably only needed 24 hours but i knew that one day i'd want to do this test and, um, and when i did i wanted them to be totally 100% dry, nothing uncured in the center. Um, on their website, they say that once they're dry, they need to be removed mechanically. That's effectively what we're doing right now. Like that is a mechanical removal. So I don't know, you, anyone who is an expert in this space will have holes to pick in this. They'll say you, you risk damaging the, the, the boat. That's probably true. Um, if it was a longer piece, how would you do it? You might have to do it in sections. That's probably also true. Um, but I'm just telling you it worked for me and uh, it's, that's good enough for me. Um, this tool, no uh, brand aside, uh, it was the cheapest one that I could find. Um, I rate it, I use it all the time, and if you do this kind of work, I think it's really useful. Um, I actually think I learned about these watching um, uh, some videos on Boatworks today, uh, I think, uh, which is an epic channel for anyone who was doing anything anything with fiberglass. But um, but I rate, I rate the, the tool, it's a useful tool, and this attachment is something that when I first saw it, I was like, I'm not gonna need that, and then it's come in handy three or four times since then. So, uh, I'm sure if you're in the US, this thing is probably 20 bucks, knowing knowing the way uh, the world works. It's not expensive, and I think it's a useful thing to have. Um, but that's it. Matt Kelly Fishing, thank you so much for watching. I uh, really appreciate it. Like I say, make sure you give us a subscribe if this was useful. Add a comment if you've got questions, feedback, ideas, other ideas. I would love, I would love to have a different tactic to use, because the only challenge of this is if I'm on the boat, down, down uh, on the jetty, I've got to have this plugged in hardwired they do make battery ones but this is again this is a cheap one um if you've got other ideas though i would love to hear them because like i say that's a pretty decent surface to be able to get it down to if you know a better way i want to hear it thanks so much for watching guys and i'll see you soon Cheers.